Hello, everyone. I'm Diego Gonzalez Morin from Nokia Bell Labs. And I'm here to introduce you the work I've done along with uh, Dr. Pablo Perez from Nokia Bell Labs and Professor Ana García Armada from Universidad Carlos III de Madrid. The title of the paper is uh, Cutting the Cord Key Performance Indicators for the Future of Wireless Virtual Reality Applications. So, first, I will introduce you the topic and the motivation uh, behind the, our research. Um, so, the main goal of virtual reality is to fully immerse the user into a virtual scenario. And to do so, the new devices incorporate or reach really high. Um, visual resolution that can be compared to, to the human eyes uh, resolution. Uh, besides, it's also the, the new devices are also able to accurately uh, track the device's pose in, in six, six degrees of freedom. And they have also incorpor incorporated new modalities for virtual interaction, such as like hand tracking, in which the user can actually interact with the, with the virtual objects with his own hands. Um, but the problem is that all these algorithms together require really uh, powerful computing platforms uh, like high-end GPUs and CPUs. And that's the main reason why the, why the virtual reality devices are still connected uh, via wire. Um, this wire connection really constrains the user mobility, which affects considerably the immersiveness and the sense of, of presence in the, in the experience. As, as a consequence, the devices are still too bulky, too, bulky, too heavy, and it's still very uncomfortable. Um, so the main goal is to, to cut the cord. Uh, since, since the disruption of 5G, the interest of, of VR technology has increased considerably. Uh, 5G high data rates and ultra low latency capabilities can open the door to, to new um, algorithms and, and the most, impo most importantly, VR process of loading. A Mac -based, based VR offloading can also enable lighter and more comfortable and affordable devices, um, uh, improving the user mobility. Uh, and also the fact that the application can access uh, the Mac resources uh, also increase the available computing uh, resources, opening the door for, for new uh, algorithms. Um, however, immersiveness, it doesn't only come from, from a very high resolution, visual resolution. Uh, it also requires a set of state-of-the-art algorithms which demand a content, constant feed of sensor data, such as hand tracking that allows the user to interact with the, with the content, egocentric segmentation, device pose estimation, etc. And this constant feed of sensor data uh, really plays high uh, requirements on the uplink side of the, of the of the communication. Uh, so our contribution uh, can be summarized in the following four steps. Uh, the main goal is to, to study latency and peak throughput requirements for, for VR floating. And to do so, we, we first analyze the main processes involved in, in any inversive VR application. And then we want to study these, these processes to try to um, uh, get up the picture of the data flow, how the, the data is, is flowing between the different processes and also some timing requirements for each of the processes. And finally, we want to propose some VR uploading schemes and, uh, and extract some initial key performance indicators for, for, such, for such architectures. So now I will, I will move forward to the introduction of these different processes that I was mentioning before. We focus on four main processes. The first one is hand tracking that allows the user, as I said, to interact with virtual content. Egocentric segmentation, which is a very novel step. And then the main goal is to allow the user to see his own hands, his own, uh, his or her own body uh, within the virtual content, increasing considerably the sense of embodiment and sense of presence in the, in the uh, experience. And then, of course, post tracking, uh, the device uh, post tracking. And finally, the scene rendering. And the main goal is to get the input and output uh, frame sizes and data data flow uh, for each of the process, and also getting some estimations of the different processing times. Um, so post tracking, uh, it, the most algorithms just rely on RGB information along along with some inertial measurements, but some novel approaches also use depth data to to increase the robustness of the of the whole approach. Um, and the input is the RGB depth and the inertial measurements, and as I said. And then the output is just the device's poses and, and in some cases, a map. In, uh, both outputs are very, very shallow and it can be, it can be completely neglected. Um, and then we move to hand tracking. And 
there are many examples in the state of the art of land tracking. Some of them are based on RDB, some of them are based on depth uh, information, and some of them are based on both at the same time. And in this, this case, the output is still uh, can be neglected as it's only some metadata uh, um, uh, describing the, the finger joints poses updates. And then we have the egocentric segmentation uh, in which the novel approaches is a very is a very recent uh, no, uh, research path, uh, but the most novel approaches are trying to merge both the RGB and the depth sensor data. And in this case, the output is the segmentation segmentation mask uh, that is used later in the rendering uh, process. And finally, the the scene rendering. In this case, the input is, is very shallow. It's just all the outputs from the previous um, processes that I mentioned before. But the output is, is very heavy because uh, it's a very high definition uh, render frame uh, that can, 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 go up to up, can go up to 15 milli megabits. Um, so here is the general view. In order to obtain this initial uh, approximation of some numbers, we assume that the render frame is 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 uh, include is including a pair of stereo images of 4K resolution. Also, we assume that the device has a frontal uh, 1080 RGB camera and a 720 by 720 resolution depth uh, depth camera. And we also assume a compression ratio of, of 20, uh, which corresponds to a pixel weight of 0 0.9 to 1.3 bits. Um, so now we can move forward to the numerical analysis to, to extract these key performance indicators. Uh, so the, the main study is to, to, to uh, the main goal is to study the peak throughput and light latency KPIs for the year of COVID. So um, we propose a very simple model in which the, the transmission time can be expressed as the size of the send frame divided by the effective uh, throughput. Uh, we can understand this effective throughput as the peak throughput that needs to be sustained for, for the trans this transmission time. And this, this throughput already contains all the different loss sources, such as packet loss, duplication, retransmission, etc. As we are considering both the uplink, uplink and downlink, both of them are included in the total network transmission time. And we also include the um, round trip time latency uh, in, this, in this network transmission time. Uh, we need also to incorporate the estimated processing time for, for the non-network processes. And in, in, we, can see, we can see that we just added to the, to the network uh, transmission times. And the key here is that all this, this uh, frame time uh, need, needs to satisfy that it has to be smaller than the device update uh, period. Uh, we have a problem is that the processing times are non-deterministic and they are very hard to estimate. So we propose uh, we we propose a method in which we want to to extract the less restrictive set of latency, up, uplink and downlink peak throughput necessary to satisfy the this inequation uh, for a set of different uh, given processing times. Um, and to do so, we propose a very simple optimization problem in which we want to maximize the latency and minimize the, the uplink and downlink throughput. And then we, we, we apply the, the following uh, constraints in which the maximum throughput is limited by uh, eight gigabits in the, in the downlink and two gigabits in the uplink. And that the uplink is um, four times smaller than the downlink throughput according to the time division duplex uh, in the standards. Um, finally, uh, I will move forward to, to the experiments and, and the results. So we propose three different scenarios. In the first one, uh, we just upload the rendering process. So all the other processes such as hand tracking, segmentation, etc., are happening within the device. Um, and in this scenario, what we, what we have is that the frame size on the uplink can be neglected, as it's only the output from all these uh, algorithms. And the downlink is the, the frame the frame size, uh, sorry, the render, the render frame, uh, which can go up to almost 20 megabits. Uh, we assume a frame rate of uh, 60 hertz, and with, this, uh, with these conditions, we get the following results. Uh, if we assume a processing time uh, for the rendering process of five milliseconds, we, we would require a downlink throughput of around three gigabits per second, 
the input, as I said, can be neglected, and the latency has to be below five milliseconds. According to the standards, in order to achieve these, these requirements, uh, we should have a radio access with the following configuration. Uh, numerology number three, channel size of 400 megahertz, a 256 uh, quadrature amplitude mo uh, modulation, and uh, uh, two MIMO layers. Then if we move to the following, to the next scenario, we, uh, in this scenario, we assume that we are sending upstream the depth information that is gonna be used to estimate the hand tracking uh, that is done also in the MEC. And also we still leave the rendering process in the, in the MEC. Uh, and in this, in this situation, we have an uplink, uh, uplink uh, frame size of uh, 0.5 uh, and up to 1.33 megabit, and the downlink size is the same one as, as before. We also assume a frame rate of 60 hertz. And in this, in this occasion, uh, we assume that the processing time will be around eight milliseconds as we are adding more overhead on the, on the, on the MEC. And now the downlink throughput increases up to 3.6 gigabits per second, and the uplink throughput uh, now uh, uh, oscillates around one gigabit per second. The latency also decreases considerably, so now it has to uh, have values below three milliseconds. Uh, however, the radio access configuration is exactly the same as, as the, the scenario before. And now the last one. The last one is the, the toughest uh, scenario in which everything, all the processes are uploaded from the device, and the device is only taking care of capturing the, the sensor data. And in this scenario, the uplink, uh, the uplink stream uh, uh, oscillates between 3.8 and uh, 6.3 megabits, uh, with the downlink uh, size uh, the same as, as in the previous examples. And in this situation, uh, we have a downlink throughput that uh, can go up to 6.6 gigabits, and an uplink throughput that also goes up to 1.5 gigabits per second. The latency, uh, required latency, goes down to the minimum, which is two milliseconds round trip uh, time latency. And in this case, radio access configuration is the same, but we require four MIMO layers in order to, to fulfill these, these very, very strict requirements. And uh, finally, I will just go through the, some conclusions. So um, we first saw the different or the main uh, improvements uh, that can come from wireless VR and how can improve the immersiveness and comfortability. And also we explain the current state of the art of the main algorithms uh, uh, of virtual reality, indicating their data flow and also the processing times uh, estimation. Uh, we also highlighted the importance of the uplink stream, a stream that has not been uh, previously studied uh, thoroughly. And uh, we propose a very simple optimization problem for trying to estimate uh, an initial set of KPIs for different offloading architectures. And finally, using the results from, from the experiments, we propose some radio access configurations that are able to achieve the, the, uh, such, such requirements. Um, and this was my presentation, and thank you all very, very much for, for attending.